I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. That's what the word says. <laughs> I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. He rescued me from all of my troubles. They looked at him and were radiant. Their faces were not ashamed. The poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him. And he saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around all those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Do you know that the angel of the Lord can kill 185,000 people? So what you worried about, man? You got it, thousands of them. See, but if there's, there's got to be a place. You got to be into a place and a position. The first thing is, you must know it. Because if you don't know it, the demons know you don't know it. Amen. Then they challenge you to it. <laughs> See, because they say, they get everybody. Yo, spirit of fear, doubt, unbelief, confusion, frustration. Come on, thousand voices. you let's go. We got a meal here. Why? Because they don't know it. They don't even know that they're being used. So let's go get a meal. Then they show up, you know. You ever see the road runner and a coyote? Comes always trying to catch him with a, what do you call that thing that comes over? Bib and fork and knife. He's always trying to, he sets traps for them all the time. That's what demons do. They set traps for them all the time, people all the time. And then they go down there, beep, beep, you know. <laughs> and they eat the food. Never catches the road runner, you know, no matter what he tries to do. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Bless is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for there is no lack to those who fear him. Mm. There's no what? Lack to those who reverence, honor, and respect him. Young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek, everyone say seek. There's something very important in that word seek. It says see. Those who seek, those, he says, seek my face. Seek ye the kingdom of God and all things will be added to you. Seek, that means see. Those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. So there's something very important. Seek, see, sight. Seek, see, sight. Vitally important. One of the things the enemy does not want you to do is to be able to see. He wants you to be short-sighted so that you can only see yourself. And if you can only see yourself, you will live by how you feel. And feelings blind you. I'm going to say that again. Emotions blind people. It's like somebody putting a person who wears glasses and they can't see without them, and emotion comes up and paints black on them. And they can only see so far. They can't see anything. The only thing they can rely on is their own intellectual self and feeling. So they're short-sighted because emotion's blind. The only thing that they're concerned about is them, what's good for them, and how it can be fulfilled. Everybody okay? Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who's a man desires life and loves many days that he may see good? See good. Anyone want to see good? Amen. Keep your tongue from evil. Amen. And your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace Amen. and pursue it. Now listen to this. Are you ready for this? The eyes, hello, of the Lord are on the righteous. See, when you see, he sees that you see. His ears are open to, to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them 
from the earth. But the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them again out of all of their troubles. Amen. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as have a contrite, humble spirit. Many are the afflictions that are righteous. Hello. So you ain't the only one going through it. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. If you will allow him and wait for his deliverance and try and stop trying to get it out yourself. Because that's all you do is fall into another affliction. He guards all of their bones and none of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked. Hello. Evil shall slay the wicked. They're going to kill each other. Why, you praise God. <laughs> and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. I think it's time that our complete trust in him. I believe God's doing a new thing. Amen. And in this new thing and in this new season, there's so much holy shift. <laughs> that ought to snap you up. <laughs> He's cleaning up a lot of stuff right now. We're in a holy shift. Everyone say, holy shift. Holy shift. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 2. Glory to God. What's that word that's in seek? See. Uh, I don't know. Search it out. <laughs> if you want to know that psalm, seek. <laughs> Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter two and verse six. Is everybody there? Let's read it together. However, we speak wisdom among those who are what? That means the immature ain't gonna get it. We, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to what? Even though they think they're coming to everything. They're coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Why? Because it prevents those who, do not, who are not here, his. They can't hear who are his. Only those who are his can hear. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Whose glory? Our, our glory, that he may be glorified. Which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they had known, they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory. But it's written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. For those who what? Love. For those who what? Love him. So you must make a choice to love him. And he says, if you'll love me, you obey me. That's the choice. If you love me, you'll deny yourself. Pick up the cross and follow me. If you love me, you'll examine yourself because you don't want anything between us. If you'll love me, you'll surrender to me and trust me. Other than that, you still love yourself. In verse 10, but God has revealed them, these wonderful things that he's prepared for us, to us through his what? This is, now look, at, I want you to think about this for one second here. His spirit. Come on. God Almighty Spirit. His spirit. His spirit. Not your neighbor's spirit. His. The one that created all things who was, is, and is to come. 
the one that holds the universe in the palm of his hand. His spirit. He is allowing and releasing his own presence of his own spirit to me and you. We can't even comprehend that. His spirit which holds everything together. His spirit that covers all creation and all things that are and were and will come. His spirit that covers it all. That makes everything perfect timing. That every rotation of every planet, every star that burns out, is all God's perfect timing, all calculated to maintain and uphold everything in this universe so that you and I could breathe in this realm by his spirit. Ooh. Snap. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things Yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man is in him? So even no one knows the things of God except for the what? Spirit of God. His spirit. You know, we take so many things for granted. Because religion has a way of placing things in. Come Holy Spirit, fire, rain. But it's the Spirit of God. His Spirit. That's why where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Why? Because ain't nothing going to mess with His presence. Can't mess with His presence. <laughs> They'd cook. They'd fry. They disintegrate in His light. They can't handle it. In his presence, where the spirit of the Lord, where the presence of God's spirit is, is freedom. So it's our responsibility to make way for his presence. It's like we're to sweep the room and clean it up for him to come. Does everybody get this? That's our responsibility. That's why we, he gave us the blood to be washed from sin. But it's our responsibility. That's why he said, and you cast out devils. What's he saying? Okay, you make a place for me. Wasn't the tabernacle built by man? What were they doing? Making a place for his spirit. That has not stopped. It's still continuing. It's still our responsibility to make a place for his spirit. His presence all the time. That's why the word says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit by what? The things that you speak. The things that you think. The things that you touch. The things you agree with. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. See, because the Holy Spirit knows all, sees all, hears all. To me and you, we think that We have that tendency of man, man doesn't see it, man doesn't hear it, so then God doesn't. But that's not true. See, we are not flesh in the eyes of God. I'm going to say that again. We are not flesh in the eyes of God. We are spirit in the eyes of God. So all flesh is removed. He sees spirit, and he sees what, whether that spirit is contaminated. He sees what's holding on to that spirit. He sees the other sp demonic spirits that are attached to it. He sees it all. He knows the intents before you can even can calculate it. He knows your thoughts before you can even think it. Everything. We are totally, completely naked before him. Transparent, not flesh, but spirit. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. In verse 12, it says, Now, we have received not the spirit of the world. We've rejected the spirit of the world, which is lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. 
but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things, that we might know the th- that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Why? That means cooperation. That's why the word might is in there. So that means that you and I must constantly make room for the presence of God, His Spirit, so that He can release things to me and you without the enemy stealing them. See, because so many times he's trying to release something to me and you, but the enemy steals it. We actually give it up. Because of the things we think, things we say, things we assume. Because the enemy sees and he knows. He knows. See, he can even see when God's getting ready to release something to you and he prepares. The word says that the enemy prepares a trap for me and you every single day. So you know how he prepares a trap, first of all? He gets you to, and I to agree with something. He starts his day off by getting you to agree with something. He doesn't do anything right then and there. Once that agreement has been made, you don't even know you made that agreement. That's how sly he is. And then he sprinkles it with water. You know, like those priests do with the holy water? Chuk. Chuk. All day long, chick. Then sometimes too, chick, chick. And as he gets closer, it goes, then, the next thing you know, you've been bit and you bit the bait. See, he plans something against you every day. Now, here's the problem. People don't see it. They don't see it. They don't realize they agreed with something. They don't realize it. They have no idea. Because when emotions blind you, not only are you blinded, but you're not sensitive. Does everybody get it? You're not sensitive now. Oh, hallelujah. And we've not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to me and you. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy, the Holy, Holy Spirit, the presence, the spirit of the living God, the eternal presence, his spirit teaches me and you. And let me tell you, he doesn't have to speak. His presence releases everything. There isn't a word in his presence sometimes. It's an impartation. It's like download. And there wasn't a word spoken. Because it was just grafted right into your spirit with understanding. Wow, I get that now. Wow, I get that now. And there wasn't a word spoken. See, his presence is always releasing something. That's why it says, and they looked to him, and they were what? Radiant. Why? They looked to him. They saw him. Why? There was a release to them, and they became radiant. But there wasn't a word spoken. But wisdom, knowledge, and understanding was imparted in them. Listen, there wasn't a word spoken to those in the Old Testament when the Lord said, look it, I want them to build my temple and my tabernacle, and I'm going to give them wisdom and knowledge. God didn't bring them to a class to learn Wisdom and knowledge. He imparted it in them with his presence. There wasn't a word spoken. It was an understood thing. Oh, hallelujah. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but what the presence of God teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, the natural man is a person that becomes blinded again. Praise in tongues, but still blinded. Does everybody get it? But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. Why? Because they can't receive. Because that presence is not acknowledged. That presence 
is not reverenced. Let me share with you that when it becomes taken for granted, he is distant. Only when he is reverenced is he welcomed. Is everybody okay? Only when he is reverenced is he welcomed. So we can sing and dance, and that's cool. But there's got to be a part where we are doing everything out of the Spirit. <laughs> Remember, we talked already, God is Spirit. And he searches those who are worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Again, there are many arenas where people just worship in truth, but not in spirit. Because it's a spirit to spirit. I remember one day walking past a person and my spirit grabbed somebody else's spirit. And I, I almost turned around like this. I was walking and almost went, whoa. And, uh, and the Lord said to me, tell that man something. And I was like, spirit to spirit. I went, whoa. And he was a minister, and the Lord told me to tell him that he needed to go to a meeting where the presence of God was, which he hadn't experienced yet. And it was a spirit-to-spirit -spirit connection. And sometimes there's a spirit-to-spirit -spirit connection where there are no words spoken, but they're understood. It's understood. There isn't a thing spoken. It's presence. Is pre Why? Because presence is communicating with presence. It's not intellect. It's beyond all of that. Intellect is needed in this realm. And the other realm, it's just relationship. And see, that's why God wants to bring that realm into this realm by spirit-to-spirit -spirit relationship. Is everybody okay? I had no intention of going here, <laughs> but he did. And it was imparted. It says, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are what? Foolishness. And this is crazy. I don't get this. Right. Because does everybody understand that? Nor can he know them because they are what? Spiritually discerned or what? Understood. They're spiritually what? Understood. I want you to understand again. His presence will bring understanding to the things you never thought you could understand. His presence will, be, will go beyond an under, it goes beyond intellect. It goes on to an understanding where all of a sudden every dot connects. And it's a huge, enormous puzzle that almost wipes you out because it's so overwhelming of that understanding that you can't put it into words. You can't write it down. You have to shorten it so much that almost, it's like taking one word that just exploded into billions of words. Hallelujah. <laughs> Joel chapter 2. <clears throat> Joel chapter 2. Glory. Snap and glory, man. So that, so when the presence of the king shows up, what he releases to me and you brings me and you the mind of Christ. Because he so desires that we be like-minded. So what does he do? He releases a, a, a speck of his thought, his will, like, like a, an ocean that has one drop. 
he drops one drop out of the notion into me and you, and we have the mind of Christ. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. It says, and it shall come to pass afterward, and I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall what? Prophesy your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. See visions. See visions. Not only have visions, but see them. Also on my men servants and maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before the coming of the great day, the awesome, the great and awesome day of the Lord. That means before he comes, revival must come. It must come. It's got to come. And I really believe that's what God's doing. But one of the things he's doing right now is re he's restoring sight. Everyone say he's restoring sight. Why? Does he want you to miss anything? No. But he wants us to see spiritually. It shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved in, in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem. There shall be deliverance. And the Lord has said among the remnant whom the Lord calls. So it says that he'll pour out his spirit. That means revival must come. What's he going to do? He's going to bring sight. He's going to bring he hearing. He's going to bring obedience before his coming. He's going to prepare a remnant that is going to be just like him because he must replace himself here. Does everybody get this? He must replace himself here. So he's preparing us more and more. That's why revival must come because his presence must overtake his body in such an arena where there's oneness so he can replace himself. But he's going to first fulfill himself by coming here and placing his head on the body. And then he will remove us and replace us. Oh, glory. Habakkuk. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, there. Habakkuk chapter 2. Is everybody okay? In verse 1, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1. Now, why is he going to restore sight? Not only to prepare for uh, us to see again, but in re restoring sight, he brings, he restores vision. In fact, sometimes when he, as he begins to restore sight, we realize that we've drifted from the vision. And then God is preparing another vision for us to walk in that path. Sometimes he is adding to that vision. And he adds to the vision by adding individuals that have our light vision. In verse 1, he says, I will stand my what? Watch. watch. Oh, watch. What's a watch do? And don't tell me tick, tick, tick. <laughs> it sees. It's a person that sees. He's a watchman or sees. He's a seer, isn't he? He watches. I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to what? See what, what? He will say to me, 
I'm going to watch to see what he's going to say to me. And what I will answer when I am corrected. <laughs> Let me tell you, when God usually speaks, he usually corrects. And the reason why he corrects is to clean so he can approach. So you, I, I can tell you that God usually corrects us every single day. Sometimes multiple times in a day. So as his correct, remember, the question is, so what? He can approach. Remember, it's the dead that loves us. Amen? Listen, you don't want to go ha ha hug somebody that's been underneath a car for 14 hours, drenched with oil and grease. Right? And stinks. Really, I come in my office after working on a car, and that's all I hear is, what smells? I snap. Give me a break. It wasn't me. It was the oil that smelled. <laughs> so he says, I'm going to stand my watch. I'm going to set myself on the rampart. I'm going to watch to see what he's going to say to me. And, and, I'm, and then I'm going to answer because I know he's going to correct me first so that he can clean me up so he can approach and then the Lord answered me and he said write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who what reads it well to read it you got to what see it for the vision is yet for an appointed time at the end of it at the end it will what it will what so every vision speaks. Do you understand that? So it's our responsibility to interpret it. But if you can't see it clearly, you will not be able to interpret what he's saying. How many of you know God speaks more in vision than he does anything else? That's why he speaks in parables, because he always promotes a what? Vision. Though it... But at the end, it will speak, and it will what? It will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will truly come. It will not tarry. I was walking in Lowell's the other day. I got a phone call. Somebody said, hi, love you, this, that, whatever. I said, cool, man. How you doing? I went, I'm good. And hung up. About two minutes later, the phone person calls back and says, listen, I got a question for you. Has the Lord given you anything? I said, what do you mean? He says, has he spoken to you about me? I said, no, he hasn't. He hasn't said one word to me about you. Instantly, I had a vision. Here I am in Lowe's. I said, but if you'd like to hear what he, he showed me just now, I'd gladly tell you. I said, you'll have to interpret what it is that I'm going to tell you because I'm not, I don't have the interpretation, but I will tell you exactly what I see as I laid the tools down that I was trying to get. And I spoke to this person, the vision, and I said, God bless you later. And that was it. See, but God brought that vision. He can give you the vision at any time. He does not have to speak. And all of a sudden it was there. I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't trying to find a word. I wasn't anything. Was, no, I didn't have anything for you, man. I haven't heard anything. Poof, all of a sudden, there it is. But I gladly tell you what I see right now. And I did. Is everybody okay? Okay. So he says, write it on tablets, and he who sees it can read it, and they can run with it, because it's set for an appointed time, and, and, and when it does speak, when that vision does speak, it won't lie. And it's going to come in its perfect timing. And though it seems like you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting, and it seems like it never will come, it won't tarry. It will come. It's going to come. Does everybody get it? It's going to what? 
it's going to come no matter what. You know, right now, just because all of the things that have occurred, we've had the blood moons, the tetra, uh, all of these words, uh, uh, planet X, all of these things that are, have been coming all around over and over and over about, from people with visions and so forth, doesn't mean that it isn't going to happen. Does everybody get it? It's going to happen. But it's going to be an appointed time, not according to what our appointed times are or even what our calendars are. Amen? It's his appointed time, not ours. That's all we're supposed to do is make sure that we are sensitive enough to cooperate with everything he's doing. Amen? Now, so the only way to, to maintain course is to maintain sight. Is everybody with me? To maintain course is to maintain sight. So do you think that the enemy is going to try to come and get us off course? He's going to try and interrupt it. That's his job. We can talk about this every time we get together. You know. Isaiah 42. Oh, hallelujah. Isaiah 42. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Isaiah 42 and verse... Uh, oh, yeah. Is everybody there? 14. Let's read it. I have held my peace a long time. I have been still and restrained myself. Now I will cry like a woman in labor. I will pant and gasp at once. I will lay waste the mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will make the rivers coastlands and I will dry up the pools. I will bring the what? The blind by a way they did not know. I will lead them in the paths they have not known. I will make darkness light before them. That means he's going to bring them what? Sight. And crooked places straight. These things I will do for them and not forsake them. In other words, I'm going to restore sight. They shall be turned back and they shall be greatly ashamed who trust in carved images. Who say to the molded images, you are our gods. What does he say? Hear you deaf and look you blind <laughs> that you may what? See. Who is blind but my servant or deaf as my messenger whom I send? Who is blind as he who is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant? Seeing many things but you do not observe. That means comprehend. Seeing many things, but you do not observe, opening the ears, but he does not hear. Opening the ears, but not hear. You know, I want to share something that me and my personal walk, sight is everything. Without sight, it's very, very difficult. Don't get me wrong, I would love to hear the voice of the Lord, and I love, I love the audible voice of the Lord, even though we think it's audible, nobody else hears it, but we do, you know. <laughs> but there's the area because when you see, you hear. I got to say it again, when you do see, you hear. Because hearing is not always with the ear. It's with the inner ear. It's with the inner understanding. See, so when you see, you will hear. Because when you see and, 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 and his presence is releasing that, you understand. So when you understand, you know what you just did? You heard. When you, are, when you interpret that vision because you heard, it's there. So when that, when that interpretation or that discernment is released because you're able to in, interpret it or discern it, you just heard it. But you first had to see it. Amen? So, so many times people will say, well, man, the Lord, the Lord 
put this on my heart because I usually saw something. And the reason why most people say that is because they're really not certain. The Lord put this on my heart. Why? Because we see in part, don't we? When sometimes we don't see the fullness of it. We don't understand the full scope of everything. And there, but there are certain times when God will give you enough to understand what we need for now. And sometimes he'll give you something that it's in part because the other part's in the future that connects and brings it bigger. And, you know, we know, we know when the other part's been given to us and we're refusing to connect it. We know. It's not that it's tearing, it's we're causing it to tarry. See, we know that. And why are we causing it to tarry? Because we're still fighting with God. We're actually wrestling with God. Saying, I'll do whatever it takes. But not now. Let me, let me do this first. Let me do that first. Let me see, but so he's holding the other part of the vision, and you're holding the part of the vision, and he's, come on, let's connect this together. But I got a couple things I need to finish, Lord. And he takes a step back. Come on. Then he corrects. Why? Because then he tries to bring it to us. If we're willing to do what he asks, you know how many times people interfere with God's will? Because of feeling? Emotion? Why? Because remember, emotion brings blindness. It'll blind you. You know how many calls we get all the time? It's, you know, with parents with their children in jail or whatever it is. I need to bail them out. No, you don't. No, you don't. Why? Because... Sometimes that's the only time that they're able to really seek. Two places people usually end up, jail or the hospital, before they die. Why? Because God's trying to what? Get them back on course to what? See. Amen? So it gives them the opportunity to be separated Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Let's go a little further. Genesis 3. Hopefully we finish this. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Genesis 3. Many will lose sight. And miss the fulfilling of their mission. And even the word tells us that many will fall from the faith. Amen? Because that is spiritual sight. Genesis 3. Is everybody there? Oh, glory. Now the serpent was, verse 1, the serpent was more cunning beast than the, uh, of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, as God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman, of course, said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the trees, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, you shall not die. God's a liar. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be what? Open. And he wasn't wrong to that arena. They'd be open. They'd be open to self. But they'd be close to the serpent. <laughs> See, what did he try to do? He tried to steal their sight, didn't he? Because he didn't want to be seen. If he was seen, then he'd be easily overcome. The only way he could overcome individuals and deceive them is to be what? Invisible. That was his main objective, is to become unseen. So the only way he could do that 
is to get Adam and Eve to partake of the tree of blindness. Why? Because he was blind himself. Blind to what? Truth. It's called an eye for an eye. Are you ready for this? <laughs> for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So what she do? So she partook. Now look at this. When the woman saw, when the woman what? Saw. Hello. She didn't taste nothing. What she saw brought an impression that it was good to the mouth. It was good for it. She never tasted it. Because if she would have tasted it already, they would have fallen, wouldn't they? So what she saw left an impression. So when a woman saw that the tree was what? Good for food. That it was pleasant to what? To the eyes. And a tree desired to make what? One wise. She took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband and he ate. Now, it says, and then the eyes of both of them were what? Open to the kingdom of self. And they knew that they were what? A naked. And they sewed fig leaves together, made themselves coverings. Now, what connects here, please understand, is it says that the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and it was going to make someone what? Wise. So it connects is sight, what she assumed, what she saw. She saw it was good. There was, there was enticing. See, the enemy always entices us, doesn't he? That's how he tempts us. Let me share with you that when he entices, he puts a desire. That desire promotes an emotion. But first a thought must come. Every thought's connected to a voice. Every voice is connected to a presence. And when that thought releases, it releases an emotion or releases a feeling. For what? So it can recycle to feed the spirit. Because demons get fed by what? Emotion. Because everybody understand it. I, I, try to visualize this. Try to see this. Thoughts. Voice. Presence. That presence is either of God or the enemy. When that thought is manifested, it releases an emotion. So when the devil tries to bring that thought, he wants to release an emotion to get what? Fed. Does everybody understand that? When the Lord comes and, re and brings a thought, that emotion brings peace, joy, and righteousness or holiness. Anything other than that is not God. He doesn't promote lust, nor does he entice. He does not promote self. He promotes him. When he's not promoted, self is. When self is promoted, spirits get fed. Has everybody got this? Again, this was not in my agenda. We're in a whole other plane here. Whew. Luke 4. Luke chapter 4. Thank you, my Lord. We are being taught by the anointing. I'm going to tell you that right now. <sighs> Thank you, my Lord. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Let's speak it together. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Hallelujah. Yes, because he has anointed me to what? Preach the gospel to the poor. 
He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So the Spirit of the Lord, His presence, here we go back again to God, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Dad. His glorious presence is to bring me and you sight. We are all called to see, every one of us. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget when, and I've shared this story before, when Lissy was just learning how to get up and walk. And she started holding on to the cabinets. And, and you know, she did the shuffle. It wasn't a Holy Ghost shuffle. It was a little flesh creature shuffle. And uh, I was going out to the garage, and the garage door is heavy. Very heavy door. And as I was getting ready to close the door, all of a sudden a vision came and I saw her fingers in the hinge. If that door would have shut, it would have taken every one of her fingers off. She'd have had no fingers today. And instantly I saw this vision and I turned around and I, I almost wanted to ignore it, but I said, I, I couldn't. I mean, I, this is all a flash of a second. Whew. And I couldn't ignore it, and I turned around, and I grabbed the door, and there she was with her hand right there. And I thought, oh. And let me tell you, that affected me, because afterwards I thought, my God, how could I forgive myself if my daughter lost her fingers because I didn't obey the vision? Now, that was just that. I've had many. I've had visions that have saved my life when I picked up somebody hitchhiking. You know, the Lord showed me that the man was going to pick up an umbrella and stab me in the heart. Of course, next stop, <laughs> you're out of here. <laughs> and, I, and he did go after the umbrella. Well, I got a wor word in his hand too and kicked him out. But anyway. Visions will save your life. You know, think about how many traps we've stepped into. Amen? <laughs> so Jesus came to bring sight to his children. He came to bring vision. <laughs> Second Corinthians 4. Oh, glory. And he's restoring sight again right now. To those who are willing to have their sight restored. Amen? In verse 1, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 1. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not what? We don't lose heart. We keep going. We keep going. We don't give up. Amen. Let me tell you, when you, give, when you start giving up, you become blind. Now look at this. Verse 2. Read it with me. We have what? Renounce the hidden things of shame. In other words, we expose those things that are displeasing to God. We brought everything out of darkness into light. Why? So he can approach. We have now, we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Veiled. Where's the veil go over? Eyes. Whose minds, the God, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them and they could see again. So Jesus came to restore sight, store vision. So you and I, seek ye the kingdom of God and all things will be added to you. Seek my face. 
Seek the deep things of God. See things all the way through. So when there's blindness of sight, there's blindness of vision. And again, one of the things that blind individuals is emotion. Why? Because that spirit, what did it do? It released a thought that promoted a what? Feeling or emotion. So it could get what? Get fed. And the purpose was to keep me and you blind. And that if he can keep us blind all the time, he can get fed. Next thing you know, there's a party in the house and you weren't invited. John chapter 9. Glory. <laughs> John chapter 9. Glory. You know, we used to have Bible studies in one of our houses. And these Bible studies used to go to 2 o'clock in the morning. We'd take a break and go get something to eat and come back. And it would start at 7, 7.30. <laughs> and the glory of God would just fill the place. Man, we couldn't even stop. We just kept talking about the Lord. And then all of a sudden people would start having visions and stuff. They would bring their kids. The kids would be sleeping all over the living room floor. They'd be out. We'd have to carry them to the cars. And we'd be out talking, and neighbors would open the window. Hey, you want to shut up out there at 3 o'clock in the morning? Hey, come out in Jesus' name. <laughs> we'd be laughing and drunk in the spirit. Man, we didn't give a hoot. Finally, we had to just move the neighbors out. <laughs> then we took the whole cul-de-sac. And when they told us they were leaving, we'd help them move. <laughs> we even woke some of them up and started you leaving today. <laughs> Come on, we're here to move you out. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. Where are we going? <laughs> John chapter 9, thank you. Sure got hot in here, didn't it? <laughs> Verse 1. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Where am I? There it is. Verse 1. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned? See, they even understood that sin brought what? Blindness. This man or his what? Parents, because they knew inherited would bring what? Blindness. That he was born blind, and Jesus said, neither. The man or his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. So he took the dust, which the man was made from, and what he spoke in creation, he took his saliva, and he put it on the man's eyes. What was he doing? He was just creating eyes. Giving him new eyes. <laughs> and he said to them, go. What did he say? Go what? What? Go get cleansed. Go get cleansed in the pool of Salama, which is translated sent. So he went and washed, and he came back what? Seeing. Do you understand what brings sight again? What? Getting what? Cleansed. Getting cleansed, restore sight. That's what the Lord is doing right now. He's restoring sight. That's why you're, there's conviction. That's why there's chastening. That's why there's spankings. That's why we've had visions about potter's wheels. 
all of these things that are going on right now, God is shaking and cleansing. Everything that needs to be exposed has got to be. Attitude, motive, desires, will. Lust, greed. Everything must be exposed that is offensive to him. So sight can come back. Can you, listen, can you imagine if we all could see? My goodness. That's called like-mindedness. We all see the same. Come on, do you grab hold of this? We don't see by assumption. We see the same. If we all saw the same, according to the mind of Christ, things would be a lot different. There'd be more unity in the body of Christ and the things that were not right in the body of Christ, people wouldn't be petting. They'd be exposing. Does everybody get it? Remember, greed will blind. Love of money blinds. All of these things, blind, self blinds. Pride blinds. Emotions blind. So that's why he says, get cleansed and you will see again. Amen? 2 Corinthians 4.16. <clears throat> oh, hallelujah. I might be able to get this all in. <laughs> what? Glory to God. We'd be snapping it tonight. 2 Corinthians 4.16. Hallelujah, is everybody there? Therefore, we do not lose sight again, or lose heart. <laughs> Even though our outward, outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being what? Renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which was but for a moment, is working for us. It's working for us. It's really working for us. <laughs> Amen? It's working for us. <laughs> for our light affliction, which seems like a tremendous affliction, is really working for us, but it's really light. <laughs> it's working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we don't look at the things which are what? Seen. Seen. But the things which are what? Not seen. For the things which are seen are what? They're temporary. But the things that are not seen are what? Eternal. Wow. So God wants us to be able to see this. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Proverbs 17. <laughs> All right. Praise God. Proverbs 17. Is everybody okay? Are you grabbing hold of this? Proverbs 17. Yes, Proverbs 17, verse uh, ooh, 24. Is everybody there? Let's read it together. Wisdom is in the sight of him who has what? Praise God. And where was that wisdom released from? His presence. Where was that understanding released from? His presence. But the eyes of a fool are on the ends of the earth. Why? Because he's looking at the things what? Carnally. Do you ever get around someone that the only thing that they're interested in was good for them? Because they're blind. Everything is about them. Everything they associate with is about them. Everything to them is feeling. This is how I feel. This is how I think. This is how I believe. This is how I... Hi, yay, 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 yay. The eye's got to go, and it's got to be him. And to, again, 
I. Do you get it? I. It's got to go. So you can what? See. <laughs> got to pull the National Grand Forest out, those tree trunks, right? <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, let's go to Luke 11. I like this one. Luke 11. Glory. It's a new season. It's a new day. Fresh anointing. It's here to stay. It's a new season made for you and me. Let's go of the past and jump into the sea. Praise God. Into the what? Sea. Yeah. Listen, I can't do this stuff without the anointing, I'm telling you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Whoa! It's getting hot in here. <laughs> yeah. Luke eleven, thirty-three. <sighs> Is everybody there? Luke eleven thirty-three. So everybody, let's read it together, anyways. No one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a secret place or under a basket, but on the lampstand, that those who came in may what? See the light. The lamp of the body is the what? Eye. Say it again. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body also is full of light. Now, when you, that thought comes, I want you to understand, you see it. Because the thought always promotes a vision. Not only does it release an emotion, but it promotes a vision. Most of the time, we ignore the vision because we're caught up in the emotion. See, oh, hallelujah. So that emotion is distracting, isn't it? It will actually prevent you from seeing what's really the purpose of that thought. So when that thought comes and that vision, if you don't see what that thought is, re that is promoting that vision because it's, gonna, it's releasing an emotion and a vision at the same time. That's why you must be slow to what? To react or respond. That's why it says swift to hear. Amen? Because it also speaks, doesn't it? Where there's a thought, there's a what? A voice. Where there's a voice, there's a presence. When that thought comes, it not only releases an emotion, but it brings a vision. If you could stop everything in very, very slow motion, every thought would have a picture. Every thought has a picture. See, we live in this realm and sustain in this realm by memory. Your brain stays alive by memory. Has everybody got it? Hallelujah. Even though some people seem brain dead, but praise God. So the lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your body, your whole body is also full of light. But when your eye is bad, your body also is full of what? Darkness. Therefore, take heed. Taking heed means what? Be attention. Take heed. Be alert. Take heed that the light which is in you is not what? So we may think that light's in us, but what is it? Darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, the whole body will be full of light, as when the bright shining of a lamp gives you light. So again, your eye 
is the light of your body. Again, what you see is going to affect you. And what you don't see will affect you. Is everybody okay? I'm going to close at 2 Peter chapter 1. I've got a lot more of this, but I think we're cool. Glory. That's why he says, listen, if you think you're walking in light, but you hate your brother or this or that, you're actually walking in darkness, aren't you? Again, that goes back to what we were talking about before, about regret and resentment. Those are emotional things. Those are emotional attachments, don't they? Pride is emotional attachment. Those are protectors. Uh, verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which you have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises, that through these you may be what? Partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Lust. Overwhelming desire. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is what? Short-sighted. He who lacks these things is short-sighted. Even to what? Blindness. Now, why did they get that way? Because they agreed with what? Their thought. And it's forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins well now he's brought on new ones and the only way to see again is to get cleansed therefore brethren be even more diligent to make your call and election sure for if you do these things you will what never stumble for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our lord and savior jesus Christ. For this reason, I will not be neg negligent to remind you. To what? Remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth. Yes, I think it is right, as long as I am still in this place, to stir you up by reminding you and knowing that shortly I must put off my tent just as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. That's why we gather together. To what? Get reminded. Get reminded. Restoring sight. We are there now. Restoring sight. The Lord just gave us all the strategies that bring blindness. Why? Because his presence, he wants to share with me and you. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Let your presence so radiate as we see your glory, your light, your love, your truth. And bring vision to your people, restoring their sight that they may see all the way through to you.